All right, everyone, let's try another attempt at this video. I actually uh, recorded the entire thing the other day and I realized that I left a sticker on my new shirt the whole time. So it said medium right here. And I was like, oh, I can't let that slide. So anyway, last time I did the Rust in Peace bad tab book, a lot of people seemed to like it, but they kept commenting on how there's a even worse Megadeth tab book out there. And this is the book that I actually wanted when I was younger, but I just couldn't afford it or something. I never ended up getting it. So I decided to order it, check it out, and I found so many mistakes in it that I decided I had to do these songs one at a time. So today is only going to be focusing on the song Peace Sells. And uh, I think you're gonna get a kick out of all the things I found. Oh, by the way, today we're gonna be using an Atari 2600 old school joystick. Back in the day, all you needed was this and one red button to play video games, it was great. All right, so right off the bat, they make a huge mistake. It's supposed to be a chromatic climb to E. But they just have it as four open E power chords, which sounds really weak. And then the chord you're supposed to hold out afterwards, they say to play an A5, but they don't even write down an A5 in the tab. So I thought that was kind of weird. Now the really eerie descending part that I love that Dave Mustaine does is actually transcribed incorrectly here as being only four frets apart like this. So it sounds kind of weak. It sounds like this. It just isn't as evil as it should be because the real version is supposed to be five frets. So one, two, three, four, five. And check out this pattern. All you need to do is do this and then descend by one fret each time. And the rhythm of that feels so much better than doing straight sixteenths like the book says to do. So if you watch Dave live during the verse, he's mostly just riding on the open E string and then hitting the chords in between like this. Check out the chords too. So did you notice I went from the fourth fret to the third, back to the fourth, then I did a six five slide. Sounds pretty evil. The book not only says to hit a seventh fret above the E, which is kind of unnecessary. It's not the end of the world though but they say to keep just hitting the G power chord. And then at the end, we slide from the double eights to the double sevens, which is kind of weird how it went from power chords to all of a sudden just doing this inverted fifth slide. So the book just keeps doing these little things to lessen the impact of these riffs and it's kind of bumming me out. Maybe it's good I didn't get this book back when I wanted it when I was a kid because it probably would have screwed me up a lot. All right, let's get to the chorus now. The way Dave plays it live is like this. However, in the book, they're having us jump all the way up to the 10th fret for the G power chord, which is, doesn't seem like a huge deal, but it is when you have to jump to the second fret almost instantly. See how big of a jump that was? Now that's not the worst offender. The worst one is the next one. Instead of going from G to F sharp, they have us going all the way down to F. And then the ending is completely janked out. It goes. Compare that to the real version. Much different. Now I'm not gonna be focusing on all of Chris Poland's solos, even though they're all masterpieces in my opinion. He's just one of those brilliant guitar players that are really hard to emulate. But let's at least take a look at this first one. Now if you play it closer to the way Chris plays it, it's very playable because it's in one area and it's very smooth and legato and it makes a lot of sense pattern-wise. That is not an easy lick, but it's a lot easier than what the book says. So I'll try to do what the book says. Um, wish me luck. Now let's just talk about the ending licks, okay? Cause that's where it's the most apparent. If you do it Chris Poland's way, it's very pattern based and very smooth. And then the end. Nice little pentatonic lick there. But the book has it like this, the end. Then 
the differences are night and day, and I would have spent hours and hours, if not days and days, just trying to do what the book says back in the day. I know I would have. Speaking of Chris Poland, he does these great little lead fills during the second verse. And this is one of my favorite ones. I used to think it was a bend tap because it really sounds like it. The book has it like that, but they kind of mess it up. So they have us bending at the 13th fret of the first string and then letting that go and then tapping the 18th fret. And then the funniest part is at the end, they want us to do something that's kind of impossible. They want us to tap and then do the trem bar right afterwards. It says underneath it, vibrato bar. So if we did it like the book, we'd have to go like this. Watching multiple videos of Chris live, it never looks like he does the tap thing. It looks like he goes like this. Which makes sense. Here's a misprint. A lot of these books have impossible fingerings and uh, that's what cracks me up the most because when I was younger I used to actually try to follow them. These were gospel to me back in the day. So now for some reason in the second verse they have us doing an E5 power chord instead of that seventh fret octave thing but they want us to do this second fret to eighth fret stretch which could break your hand. <laughs> Sounds more like a corn riff to me. Ow. Oh, I just noticed this one. Just now. All right, so we have. Instead of going like this, they have the most impossible stretch ever. It says 10th fret, 12th fret, 3rd fret. I don't think I'm even going to try that. Nope. Not going to happen. There we go. You just got to tap the 3rd fret. Now the part that is unforgivable, in my opinion. All of this is really, but this one takes the cake, if you will. My favorite riff in the song, if not the whole album, goes like this. How does the book say to do that? They break it up into two guitar parts. One guitar is just going like this. And the other part, I swear to God, says to go like this. Now that's what they meant to put, but the tab, they even screwed up the last two notes and they say to go D to C. So it would have sounded like. Even worse. Then they have us harmonizing. It's just embarrassing. Now when you do it the correct way, one guitarist goes. Already way cooler, right? Then the other guitarist just has to harmonize along. And so on. Now Dave has some great licks on this album, like always, but uh, he does his patented stretches, you know, his pentatonic licks that he likes to do. But the book messed one up so bad that they made it almost impossible to play correctly. This is the lick right before everything stops and Dave goes, can you put a price on peace? Isn't that totally a Mustaine move right there? But to make things way harder, like this book likes to do, they're actually having us go. Now, if you try to do that up to speed, it's really hard to do that. It sounds cool, but it's way harder than just going. Not to mention, it sounds much different as well. Now, I can't really blame the book too much for the next part. Well, yes, I can. But if you listen to the recording and slow it down, when the guitar kicks in in the middle and Dave plays the riff that the bass player Ellison does in the beginning, he goes like this and it's kind of strange. The first time, so that's what the bass says in the beginning of the song. But then after that, Dave seems to just go like this. Or something like that every single time. He sort of varies it up each time. But it just seems to go to the A. I don't know why, but they have a sliding halfway through this. That sounds way more like Zeppelin than Megadeth. Now, when the other guitar comes in and basically mimics the bass lick from the beginning of the song again, it's consistently this now. But the book has us going. It's a much more awkward way to play that. All right, let's look at one more Chris Poland lead. He does this classic rock motif, and uh, it's actually pretty simple. It's in one spot. It's very pentatonic. You see how it's all in one spot and it seems pretty easy? Here's what the book has. 
Not only are the notes wrong, but all of a sudden we have to jump all the way to the 20th fret to hit that bend. When if you do it correctly, you just stay in one spot and hit it at the 15th fret. But what's kind of funny is this is actually something more like Marty Friedman would do, the way the book has it. The next part, I love this lick. It goes like this, the real way. Here's what the book has. That's just so choppy and awkward to play, I just don't know how that ever got passed. Now, in the book it says to go like this with no palm muting. Very powerful part of the song where it keeps going back and forth between riffs and licks. The correct way is way better. But nope, the book has us going. And then, I don't know, the last thing I'll mention, just kind of funny, at the very end, you know when Dave goes like this? The book tells us that Dave is singing a B note when he does that. So now I can sleep at night. All right, everyone, that was so much fun. I'm glad I redid this video, uh, this time without the sticker on the front of my shirt. But uh, I caught a few things that I didn't even catch the first time, so I think it's well worth it. We'll catch you at the next video. I think we're going to be doing some gear reviews pretty soon, some brutally honest reviews. So I'm looking forward to that, and uh, we'll catch you then. All right, thanks. Bye.